Well, hello everyone. This is Cynthia Tomain with Interactive Brokers, and thank you for joining today's webinar um, that's being brought to us by Recognia. Um, Recognia is a research provider that's also available um, and integrated into the Trader Workstation platform. With us today, I'm very pleased to have Peter Ashton, who is the Vice President um, of Retail and Self-Directed Investing. So, uh, Peter, thank you for joining us. Let me go ahead. I'm I'm going to pass the controls over to you if you could accept those controls um, and then simply go and share your desktop. We'll get underway here today. Thanks for joining us, Peter. Well, thank you, Cynthia. Pleasure to be here. Hopefully everyone can see my screen at this point. And thank you for That's joining great. today for this presentation entitled An Event-Driven Approach to Finding ETF Trade Ideas. And as Cynthia says, my name is Peter Ashton. I'm the VP of Retail and Self-Directed Investing at Recognia. Just before we start, another quick disclaimer, just to say that we're going to be talking about a number of examples of real securities as part of this presentation. All of these are presented as uh, for education purposes only, and none of the information in this presentation is intended to constitute a buy, sell, or hold recommendation from Recognia. So in terms of our agenda, I'd like to start with a little bit about Recognia and who we are and what we do. We'll then move on and talk about our unique event-driven approach to technical analysis. And we'll talk a little bit about how that is different than perhaps many of you are using technical analysis today. We'll talk about the three major classes of technical events we, we use in our products, those being the short-term patterns, the indicators and oscillators, and finally the classic patterns. And last, I'll tell you about a very interesting newsletter offered by Recognia through Interactive Brokers, known as the Recognia ETF Newsletter, and how you can get some daily ETF trade ideas via this newsletter. And then last, we'll follow up with some questions and answers. So if you have questions, please uh, submit them through the Q&A tool, and we'll deal with them at the end of this webinar. So to begin, a very quick overview of uh, who is Recognia. We are a provider of investment research. We were founded in the year 2000. We're a Canadian company based in Ottawa, Ontario. And we've been part of the Trading Central Group since 2015. We are leaders in technical, fundamental, and quantitative research worldwide, operating out of offices in London, Paris, New York, Hong Kong, and Ottawa. And we provide coverage of stocks, ETFs, indices, options, and foreign exchange on a global basis. So I'd like to begin by talking a little bit about our approach to technical analysis. And we'll start with just a little bit of background on technical analysis in general. And I'm sure many of you are already using technical analysis as part of your investing and trading decision-making process. For those of you who are, who are not, there's a little bit of an introduction here to why you might want to think about including some technical analysis in your investing tool bag. And then we'll go on and talk about Recognia's specific approach. So we talk about the basics of technical analysis. It's really all about looking for patterns and relationships in the price and volume history of securities that can help to tell us something about the attitudes of buyers and sellers. So if we think about every trade that's taking place on an exchange, be that for a stock or an ETF or what have you, that trade represents an agreement between a buyer and a seller for what is the fair price of that security at that moment in time. And that fair price reflects everything that is publicly known. So it reflects the fundamentals, reflects the news, reflects the general market sentiment about the market in general or about that sector of the market or about that company. And by basically following the changing prices, it can tell us something about the shifting balance of supply and demand for that stock or ETF in the marketplace. And that can help us to make better investing and trading decisions. And many people are surprised to learn that technical analysis is not a new practice. In fact, it dates back more than 300 years to the rice markets of Japan. But modern technical analysis that we follow today really dates back to Charles Dow. And this is the same Dow we know from the Dow Jones Industrial Average. He was the first editor of the Wall Street Journal. And Charles Dow really is the father of modern technical analysis. So Dow watched the stock markets back in the late 1800s, and he believed the markets tended to move in cycles. And Dow called those cycles the primary trend, the intermediate trend, and the short-term trend, shown on this particular chart. So the primary trend Dow felt lasted anywhere from nine months to two years. That's the blue line we have drawn. Superimposed on top of the primary trend, we have what's known as the intermediate trend, sometimes called the midterm trend, which lasts anywhere from six weeks to nine months. And then further superimposed, we have the short-term trend, the red line, which lasts anywhere from two to six weeks. 
So what's important is to note that in some places, for example, over here where my mouse is, all three trends are moving in the same direction, that is upward. Whereas other places, perhaps over here, for example, we have the intermediate and short-term trends moving up, but the primary trend moving down. So understanding where we are in each one of those market trends is very important to making the right kind of trading decisions. If anybody comes away from this presentation with a desire to learn more about investing using technical analysis, then I really highly recommend this book called uh, Technical Analysis of Stock Trends. This is by Edwards and McGee. It probably is as close as there is to a Bible of technical analysis. This book actually came out in the 1950s. It's currently in its ninth or maybe even its 10th edition at this point. Um, and it really kind of lays out the basics of technical analysis and how to use it as part of your investing and trading. But I wanted to use a quote from this book that I thought was uh, very good and kind of answers the question why technicians are so interested in just the price. Edwards and McGee said that the market price reflects the hopes and fears and guesses and moods, both rational and irrational, of hundreds of potential buyers and sellers. Price is the only figure that counts. So again, Edwards and McGee felt that by studying the price, you're studying all the things that go into driving that fair market price, which includes the news, the fundamentals, and so on. Let's take a look at an example. So here's a, a real price chart. This is a stock called Micron, kind of an interesting price history. So you can see that back in late 2013, early 2014, the stock was on a, a huge bullish trend. It ran up from about $12 up to uh, to about $34 over, uh, over roughly a one year period. It then entered a bearish phase and declined from you know, roughly October, November of 2014 into early, the early days of 2016. And then it reversed and actually climbed again back up to $32. So lots and lots of ways you could have traded this particular stock. But how would you have known where the right place to enter and exit a position in this stock would have been? Well, this is one of the ways that technical analysis can help us. So a technical trader would have looked at this price chart and said, ah, I actually see a particular pattern here. Here's something we call a head and shoulders bottom. This is what is known as a bullish reversal pattern. So it tells us the previous bearish trend is likely to reverse. So this bearish trend that started in October of 2014, you know, was likely to reverse where the head and shoulders bottom was confirmed. So the head and shoulders bottom is characterized by three successive declines and rallies, bouncing off this horizontal red line known as the neckline, on all of those occasions except the final one where it actually breaks through. So it's called the head and shoulders bottom because it's an upside down head and shoulders. It looks like this is the left shoulder and we have the head and then the right shoulder and then the neckline is that level of resistance, which when we break it actually confirms the new bullish trend. So we confirmed this head and shoulders bottom and we broke through this neckline here about $18 and the price actually went on to rally up to about $32 over the, the coming months. Now, the traditional approach to technical analysis, many of you may be familiar with, and, and really technical analysis right from its earliest days is all about price charting. It's all about looking at price charts. So here's an example. Let's pick one particular stock. Maybe I'm interested in Apple. And uh, you know, we look at a price chart for Apple to, you know, today, and this was taken a few months ago, obviously, but if we're looking at this chart, you know, what does technical analysis tell us about the direction of Apple? Well, we could look at a number of different kinds of indicators to tell us what might be happening with this particular stock. Let's begin with something very simple. Let's look at something like a moving average. And I'm sure many of you use moving averages. So I've drawn on here in the blue line is the 21 day moving average. So generally speaking, when the price is above the 21 day moving average, that's considered to be bullish. And in fact, where you cross the 21 day moving average in the upward direction, right here, for example, that's a bullish event. So Apple's trading above its 21 day moving average in this example. Um, so that's certainly bullish for the, the price of Apple. Let's move on and look at something else. Let's perhaps look at another sort of volatility indicator. Let's look at the Bollinger Bands. And these were invented by John Bollinger back in the 1980s. And they tell us something about you know, where the stock is trading compared to its historic volatility. And normally speaking, if you look at where Apple is trading right now, in this example I have, it was trading at 152.78, which is right at the upper level of the upper Bollinger Band. So generally speaking, um, being at the upper level of the Bollinger Band is an indication of a stock that's getting stretched. It's probably looking a little bit overbought and it may in fact return lower more towards its, its moving average. So that would indicate that perhaps Apple's not really a good time to buy. Maybe the stock is looking a little bit overstretched. Let's look at another example. Here's, a, here's another indicator or oscillator which could tell us something about the, um, uh, the, the uh, 
price outlook for Apple. And let's look at the MACD. MACD stands for Moving Average Convergence and Divergence. And we basically have a few different things shown here. We have what's called uh, the MACD signal, which is the difference between two moving averages of different time frames. And that is actually above zero, which is considered to be bullish for the MACD. So that's bullish for Apple. And in fact, where the the price crosses the signal line in the upper direction, the signal line is this red line, that's also bullish. So both of those are actually true. So MACD would actually be looking bullish for Apple. And finally, let's look at something else. Let's look at the relative strength index. This is basically the strength of a company's price compared to its own price history. And the RSI in this example for Apple is at 66.56. Um, but it's getting very close to that level of 70, and 70 is often considered a level whereby a stock is looking overbought when the when the RSI exceeds 70. So it's very, very close to that level. Hmm, maybe Apple's looking a little overbought after this very strong run you see. So we have certain things that are telling us this things look bullish, some things look a little bit more bearish. This is a very typical scenario in te technical analysis, different indicators sort of telling you different things. What would you do in this case of Apple where we have certain things telling us it's bullish, certain things looking more bearish? Well, the outlook is not exactly clear. So what I would do as an investor, I would probably move on to the next stock in my watch list and then see what's happening with that particular stock. Now, this is my watch list, perhaps. I've got maybe 20 or 30 or 50 or maybe even 100 stocks that I want to keep an eye on because they're stocks that I'm interested in and may want to invest or trade. So that process that I went through with Apple, I have to go through with all of these other stocks. And I think immediately you can see that this is a very time consuming process. And in fact, I'm gonna be looking at a lot of stocks or a lot of price charts to do this. And uh, you know, this, certainly this becomes a very time consuming process. But this is exactly where computers can help us. Computers are very good at automating things for us. So this process of looking at lots and lots of different price charts and looking for where opportunities exist, this is the kind of thing that computers can help us with. And that's what Recognia's system actually does, is we help to automate the standard practices of technical analysis. And in fact, we're looking for things we call technical events, things which are of interest to a technical trader. So let me give you a little bit of an overview of our event-driven approach and how it can make this process of looking for ideas a whole lot easier. So Recognia defines about 60 plus different kinds of technical events. And uh, we've talked about some of those already, things like the head and shoulders bottom or the MACD or the RSI. We group those events into you know, three different classes. We have what are called the short-term patterns, the indicators and oscillators, and then last, the classic chart patterns. What I'd like to do is kind of run you through some examples of some of these different times, types of events. It won't be very, won't be all inclusive, but I'll give you some examples. We'll talk a little bit about how some of these kinds of events can help you in your investing and trading. Let's begin with what are called the short-term patterns. And many of you are probably using these already. And as the name suggests, the short-term patterns are based on the shape and candlesticks of, uh, shape, shape and relationship of candlesticks or price bars. They tend to form over a short period of time and their influence lasts a short period of time, hence the name short-term patterns. And a very well-known example of a short-term pattern is, for example, a hammer. So to to uh, recognize a hammer, we have to be using candlestick charting like I'm doing here. And here's a, a real example of a, of a price chart. This is Symantec. And you can see the price of Symantec's kind of been a bit all over the place. We've had a big run up from uh, you know roughly $29 to over $30, it then declined back down to the $27.50 range. And we have, you see here outlined with this uh, red box, we have a very special candlestick that we call a hammer. And a hammer is special to us in technical analysis because it is what is known as a bullish reversal pattern. So you can see Symantec's been in a decline ever since roughly the 12th of June in this example. The hammer suggests the price is going to reverse from that decline and to actually move higher. So let's think a little bit about what the hammer tells us about the sentiment of traders on the day that it takes place. So again, let's look at this one particular candlestick. So this tells us that the price actually opened right here. So very close to the high of the day. Somewhere during the day, it actually moved much, much lower. So well below 27.50, but then something caused the price to reverse and move higher. And we actually closed right very, very close to the highs of the days. What did that tell us about the sentiment of traders? Well, it tells us they started the day fairly bearish because they immediately drove the price much, much lower. Something actually happened during the course of the day that caused them to change their perspective. The price reversed and moved higher, and we actually closed back near the highs of the day where we had opened. So the hammer can tell us something about the fact that sentiment of traders has changed. 
Now in this particular example, of course I always pick examples that work, but this particular example, you see that the price of Symantec did go on to rally very strongly over roughly the next two weeks after the occurrence of this hammer. And by the way, the, these tens of kinds of patterns tend to have influence over roughly 10 to 20 candlesticks. Now, of course, the challenge of trading this kind of a pattern is, you know, you don't get the benefit of seeing what happens next, like I had in my example. So when you're trading this kind of pattern, you're going to look for a technical event like a hammer, which suggests to us the price is going to reverse and move higher. And you are either going to watch it for a couple of days if you're conservative and kind of see what happens. Make sure that that reversal to the upside is actually taking place. Then you can enter your order, get into your position. But remember, the influence of a hammer is fairly short, so don't wait too long. Or if you're more conservative, what you might want, sorry, if you're if you're more aggressive, what you may want to do is enter immediately on the day following the occurrence of a hammer. But in that case, you're going to make sure you have a stop loss order in place to actually protect your capital in the event that the price happens to go in the opposite direction than you expect. And all of these technical events are not foolproof. None of them is a crystal ball that predicts the market with 100% efficiency. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And in the event that it doesn't work, you want to make sure you're protecting your capital using uh, techniques like stop loss orders. A few more examples of short-term patterns, and these are ones that are very commonly used by technical traders. And I, I love the way they've named these patterns. They have such descriptive names. So here's one called the hanging man. And why is it called a hanging man? Well, it sort of looks like a hanging man. It's got a, uh, you know, it looks like a man's head here and his legs hanging down from the hangman's noose. So the characteristics of a hanging man are that this is a bearish reversal pattern. So the opposite of a hammer comes at the end of an uptrend in the price of the stock. And again, this suggests the price is going to actually move lower. Um, a characteristic of the hanging man has a small real body. So this real body up here, and I want a very, very long lower shadow. And a long lower shadow is better because it tells us that the reversal in the sentiment of traders is more pronounced. Now, we always want to see in the case of a hanging man, a shadow that's at least twice the size of the real body. So in this case, this is not a hanging man or not a good example of a hanging man because the real body is too big compared to the length of the shadow. Now here's two different hanging men, A and B. Which one is more significant? Well, based on what I've told you, hopefully you're thinking, well, B is more significant because the shadow or the wick is much, much longer. That tells us that the sentiment of traders followed a wider swing when this particular uh, hanging man has occurred. And therefore, this is more significant in terms of influencing the future price of the security. Now, does it matter whether or not the real body is black or white? In this case, I've drawn a black real body, but this is still a valid hanging man, whether the real body is either black or white, it doesn't make a difference. What's really much more important is uh, this a small real body and a very, very long shadow coming down. Another good re, uh, reversal pattern we use in technical analysis is called the bearish engulfing pattern. And the bearish engulfing pattern occurs when we have a white candlestick, which is followed the next day by a black candlestick, which completely engulfs the real body of the preceding candle. So here's an example. The black candlestick to follow um, is completely engulfs the real body of the white candlestick. Now we also have a bullish counterpart called the bullish engulfing pattern. And in this case, we have a black candlestick immediately followed by a white candlestick, which immediately totally engulfs the real body of the black one. Now, in the case of all of these engulfing patterns, whether they be bullish or whether they be bearish, they need to come at the end of a, of a, of a well-defined trend. So for our bullish engulfing pattern, we wanna see that coming at the end of a uh, a long or pronounced downtrend in the price of the security. So here we see the price moving down. I'd like to see at least five candlesticks lead, leading into this. And then we actually have um, a bullish engulfing pattern indicating the price is likely to reverse. Similarly, for the bearish engulfing pattern, it has to come at the end of an uptrend in the price of the security. So a well-defined uptrend, not every day has to be up for five days, but we wanna see a strong trend coming into it, followed by this bearish engulfing pattern, a white followed by a black candlestick. And the engulfing pattern, as I say, is more significant after a sharp rally. Now here's two examples of bearish engulfing patterns. Which one is the better example or which one is more significant? Well, in this case, I would like the one on the right-hand side better because you can see that the engulfing candlestick engulfs not just the real body, but the wicks of the preceding candlestick as well. So that's a more significant engulfing pattern. 
So I've given you a few examples of short-term patterns and hopefully you can see how those uh, might be helpful to judge where the price of securities is likely to reverse. Uh, let's move on to the next kind of technical events. And these are called indicators and oscillators. And probably many of you on this webinar, these are what you are most familiar with. Uh, these are very, very commonly used. Um, they're based on moving averages or other kinds of mathematical functions. The reason why these are so widely used is not because they are more effective than any other kind of technical event, but rather they're very, very easy to calculate. So every charting program offers many, many different kinds of indicators and oscillators, whereas things like the short-term patterns and the classic patterns are much more difficult to calculate on a price chart. And in fact, in the past, it would have been something that a human technical analyst would have, would have created. So a bit more about indicators and oscillators. So there are three different types that we commonly use. We have what are called the trend following indicators. And typically these are things like moving averages that smooth the price so that trends can be more easily seen as lines. So basically they're trying to remove some of that noise to give you the signal more clearly so you can see it. We also have indicators and oscillators we call momentum indicators. These are things that measure the speed or direction of price changes. So they can tell us how significant the price movement is. And last, we have what are called the stochastics, which measure the position of the closing price relative to the recent highs and lows. These are less commonly used, but very, very useful to technical traders. And let's just look at one example here. Let's look at moving averages. And these are things that probably every technical trader uses in one way or the other. And uh, there's many different kinds of moving averages. The simple moving average is the easiest to understand. It's really just defined as the average price over the last N days or N candlesticks. Um, so, for example, the 21-day simple moving average is just the closing price over the last 21 days added up and divided by 21. Then tomorrow, when I want to calculate tomorrow's value, I don't have to add up 21 days again. All I got to do is drop off the oldest value, add in the newest value, and divide by 21 again, and that gives me today's value for the simple moving average. So these things were very easy to calculate even in the days before computers. Uh, moving averages tend to work best as trading signals in trending markets. So you have a market that's moving very, very sideways and is very undecided what it wants to do. Uh, moving averages aren't as useful as when we have trending markets. And people often ask, like, where do these time frames come from? Why do we use the 21-day or the 50-day or the 200-day moving average? Well, all these are just relative. So, for example, the 200-day moving average is very commonly used as a long-term trend indicator. This originally was used in the commodities market, specifically the metals and silver market. Market, um, because at the time, um, there's a lot of interest in silver trading, and Kodak was the world's biggest buyer of silver in the world, and they used to keep a 200-day supply of silver on hand. So a 200-day moving average was very useful in understanding the price movements of, uh, of the silver market. So here's an example, again, of a, of a security, and I've got two different moving averages drawn on this price chart. I have in blue the 50-day simple moving average, and then in red the 200-day. And you can see we could use these two simple moving averages in two different ways. So what's interesting to note is that the 200 day simple moving average actually forms a very nice level of dynamic resistance to the price of the stock. So look how many times the price actually approached or touched that red line without ever actually breaking through. That's a great example of how a simple moving average can act as a level of either support or resistance to the price of the stock. Now the 50 day simple moving average could actually be used as a very simple intermediate term trading signal. So typically in technical analysis where the price crosses the moving average in the upward direction, that is considered to be a bullish signal. Where the price crosses in the downward direction, that is considered to be a bearish signal. So if I just plot with a green arrow where we go cross in the upward direction and with a red arrow where we cross in the downward direction, you could have made a very simple trading system out of this. You could have bought where the green arrow is here and profited from this uptrend. And then I would have sold, or better yet, sold short where this red arrow is and profited from this decline, bought here, sold short here, and so on. So I probably would have made money following that over the, the period shown in this uh, particular price history. And last, let's talk about the classic patterns. And in many ways, um, I think that for, for retail traders, classic patterns are the most actionable type of technical events. So these are typically distinct price swings forming a shape on a chart. So I showed you a head and shoulders bottom before. That's an example of a classic price pattern. Let's look at a few other examples. Um, so here's one called the symmetrical continuation triangle. This is a price history for square. And you can see in this case, the price has been moving upward since November 2016. Um, the price rose quite nicely in this in this uh, con contained uh, upward price trend. 
But then starting in about March 2017, the price kind of moves sideways for a number of months. And you can see basically it's oscillating back and forth between this upper level of resistance and this lower level of support. And what's interesting is those support and resistance lines are actually converging. So the swing that you're getting in the price is getting progressively less and less as the attitudes of buyers and sellers become more closely aligned. So it doesn't take a genius to realize that trend can't continue forever. Eventually, the price of square is going to have to either break out above the upper level of resistance or break below the lower level of support. Either way, that'll be a technical event that'll tell us something about the direction of the stock going forward. In this case, the price happened to break out above the upper level of resistance. And where a previous level of resistance is overcome, that's considered to be a bullish sign in technical analysis. So this is what is known as a symmetrical continuation triangle. It tells us the previous bullish trend is likely to continue. And in fact, that is what did happen in this particular example. The price went sideways for a number of months, but upon breaking out upward above that uh, upper level of resistance of the symmetrical triangle. We went on a big, big run and the price of Square actually ran up from about $17 to about $23 over about the next one or one and a half months. Now, what's very, very important is this idea of confirmation. These patterns don't mean anything until the price has broken out one way or the other. So breaking out above that upper level of resistance is what confirmed this symmetrical continuation triangle. Now, the reason I say that these patterns can often be the most actionable is because unlike the indicators and oscillators and unlike the short-term patterns, classic patterns can tell us something a bit more quantitative about what may happen next. What technical traders have learned to do is to derive what's called an expected move or a target price from these patterns. And the way that's done is by measuring the height of the pattern. So in the case of a triangle, we're gonna measure from the wide end, uh, the amount of price between uh, support and resistance at the widest end. We're going to add that amount of price to the confirmation price where we broke out above the upper level of resistance of the triangle. And that gives us a rough rule of thumb for where we think the price is going to go. So this particular pattern suggested that the price could move up to $20. And in fact, it did that quite quickly. And in fact, it even stretched out beyond that and went up to about 23. Technical traders will also drive what they call the trading horizon how long do we think it will take to reach the target price? The way that's done is by measuring the amount of time or number of days from where we entered the pattern to where we confirmed the pattern. And let's add that amount of time to the confirmation date. And that gives us a rough rule of thumb for how long we think it's going to take to reach the target price. So in this particular example I've given you, we actually hit the target much, much sooner and in fact went beyond it. But as a rule of thumb, these, these techniques of de delivering uh, or, or um, uh, deriving uh, target prices and a trading horizon can be very helpful for us in actually quantifying risk and reward in a trade. I'll give you a couple other examples, more than a couple, I'll give you a few other examples of, of classic patterns. And some of these may be very familiar to you and some of them you're hearing about for the first time. But triple bottoms are great examples of classic patterns. These are, uh, again, bullish reversal patterns telling us the previous bearish trend is going to reverse. And I'm showing you in these examples, I'm showing you the bullish uh, pattern, but there's also a bearish counterpart, the triple top. So here, we've, here you can see the price has moved down for a number of weeks or months. We have three successive declines and rallies, decline, rally, decline, rally, breaking through that horizontal level of resistance on the third attempt. So in this case, it's very similar to the head and shoulders bottom I showed you earlier, but notice in this case, the, the three troughs or three declines are all at about the same level, whereas in the case of the head and shoulders bottom, the middle one or the head was much, much lower. Now, you notice this green area that I'm showing here, this is what's called the target price region. So this dark green at the top, this is that target price we talked about. This is where um, the pattern suggests the price is going to go. And then the width of that green rectangle is how long we think it'll take to reach the target price. So very, very easy to visualize on charts what the pattern is, is uh, suggesting to you is going to happen. The double top and double bottom are, are very, very useful patterns as well. Again, sort of a, sort of a subset of the, um, of, the, of the triple bottom. In this case, instead of three successive declines and rallies, it's two, again, breaking through that upper level of resistance on the second attempt. Uh, triple bottoms and triple tops are quite rare. Double bottoms and double tops are actually much more frequent. 
We talked about one example of a triangle already, but there are lots of other kinds of triangles. So this again is a is a, um, a symmetrical continuation triangle, but there's other kinds of triangles as well. Um, there are at, a, at the most basic, there are continuation patterns. There's continuation triangles that tell us the price is going to continue, or there are what are called reversal triangles that tell us the price is going to decline or going to reverse. And uh, there we have also divide them into uh, symmetrical and um, asymmetrical patterns as well. The upside breakout is another very common classic pattern. You'll see this all the time and, and very, very similar to some other kinds of patterns we've talked about. It's basically characterized by uh, a price of a security taking a little bit of a breather. So here you have an example of a price, price chart where the stock has moved up very rapidly. Uh, it's sort of consolidated in this range between you know, roughly June and October. It's moved sideways in a range between about $48 and $54. You see it's kind of seesawed back and forth a number of times. So that $48 level forms a level of support for the stock. That $54 level forms a level of resistance. And you can see we seesawed back and forth until we actually broke out above that upper level of resistance. This is called an upside breakout and it indicates that the price is likely to move higher. And the megaphone is a very another very interesting case. So uh, megaphone, if you look at it, you think this is the exact opposite of a triangle. Uh, we basically have an upper level of resistance and lower level of support that rather than converging are actually diverging. They're getting further and further apart. Megaphones are not that common. And the reason is because they're a sign of a market that's getting out of control. Um, basically, what we have here is a situation where the attitude of buyers and sellers is getting further and further apart, and that's why support and resistance are moving further and further apart. Eventually, either the bulls or the bears is going to get control of the market for this particular security, and the price is either going to break out above, which becomes an, uh, a, a megaphone bottom, or it'll break out the other way, become a megaphone top. But you can see the price will actually then move uh, to, towards this target price over the next subsequent weeks or months. And I'm going to finish off with another interesting pattern. This one also very rare called the rounded bottom or rounded top. Many of you may have heard of or use a pattern called the cup and handle. Rounded bottom is a sort of a more general case of a cup and handle pattern. Um, so we basically have a situation here where the attitude of buyers and sellers, rather than changing all at once, is changing very slowly over a number of days or weeks or months. And you can see that the price slowly rounds out and moves from declining to, to rising. Um, it's not that common an event, but it does happen from time to time. In the case of the cup and handle, this would be followed by a little handle on this rounded bottom, either another little circle or perhaps a little V-shaped decline and rise. But again, the rounded bottom is a bit of a more general case. So that's a few examples of classic patterns. And as I mentioned, Recogni detects automatically over 60 different kinds of technical events every single day. And we make that analysis available to uh, people through our products. But that brings me to uh, a product available to interactive brokers account holders called the Recogni ETF newsletter. There's lots and lots of interest in ETFs, uh, both as investment vehicles as well as trading vehicles today. And Recogni has an ETF newsletter to help you identify interesting opportunities in the price histories of ETFs. So every day we publish an ETF newsletter which provides three bullish and three bearish trade ideas. And these are uh, form from a universe of fairly highly traded ETFs. So you're not going to find any um, very thinly traded ETFs here. They're all very, very heavily traded. And the market is basically all US traded ETFs, uh, regardless of manufacturer. And every day we basically give you a number of ideas. And you can see these are based on our event driven technical analysis. So in this example here, we had the Vanguard REIT ETF, which had a technical event caused when the price crossed the moving average. Um, the Spider Portfolio Short-Term Corporate Bond ETF had a price crossing moving average and so on. So three different bullish and bearish signals every single day based on what is actually happening in the marketplace. And you can do actually, this is delivered by email, but you can do more than just look at your email. You can actually click on any one of these ideas and you can actually uh, open up your browser and basically see more information about the particular event. So here I have an event for the iShares MSCI South Korea capped ETF which had a pattern called the continuation diamond. 
And what you'd basically see when you opened up this particular event, you usually get a little bit of a description of what's actually happened. So we had a pattern called the continuation diamond. Here we have a target price for this particular stock of 83 to 86 dollars. The um, the price of the, the event was confirmed when the price crossed 73.84. There's a little bit of an educational content here to tell you a little bit more about what that particular event is all about. And we give you a larger version of the price chart as well. So you can actually get much more information on each one of these ideas that's delivered to you each day. Um, now you're asking yourself, how do I sign up for this uh, for this newsletter? Well, a few different ways. So many of you may have received recently as part of the FYI notification function in Trader Workstation, you may have received a notice about a new uh, ETF newsletter that's available to account holders. Um, so you could actually click on that particular FYI message to actually open up a web browser and sign up for the newsletter. Um, if you didn't receive that or you don't have it anymore, um, you can actually subscribe by going to either one of these URLs. So these URLs will both take you to a Recognia hosted signup page. You can actually click or you can actually enter your email address and say submit. You'll be added to the distribution list of our ETF newsletter. The ETF newsletter is produced every day, so five times a week at the end of trading, typically gets sent out in the evening after the trading is over and provides you with some ETF trade ideas for the following day. I will mention that the ETF newsletter is actually sponsored by iShares. So iShares is the sponsor. So this is available completely free to interactive brokers, account holders, complements of iShares. And although iShares is the sponsor, it doesn't just cover iShares product, it covers uh, all the different product families of ETFs in the US market. So I'll leave this page up just for another second in case anybody wants to write down either one of these URLs. I have a shortened one down here in green that might be easier to write down. But you can, uh, you can basically navigate to this in your web browser, whether you're logged into interactive brokers or not, and you can subscribe to our ETF newsletter. And many of you may be thinking, well, how do I unsubscribe once I've subscribed? It couldn't be easier, basically. Once you get your first newsletter, at the very bottom of every newsletter is a link to unsubscribe. If you decide these newsletters or these ETF trade ideas aren't, aren't for you somewhere down the road, you can unsubscribe yourself and no longer get it. So very, very easy to take yourself off the distribution list, just like it is easy to put yourself on the distribution list. So I really hope that you'll all have a chance to, uh, to try this new newsletter. I think it provides some really great um, trade ideas for ETFs that you may not come across on your own. And all of these are based on the uh, standard practices of technical analysis like we've talked about in this webinar. So with that said, what I'm going to do at this point is going to pass the webinar back to Cynthia and we're going to run our question and answer session and I'm happy to answer any questions you have about technical analysis or about Recognia or about the ETF newsletter. So over to you, Cynthia. Okay, well, Peter, thank you very much. And if you do have any questions, I want to remind everyone, there's the control panel that appears on the right-hand side of your screen. Simply go into the questions title bar, and you can send any of your questions or comments to Peter at this point. Um, by the way, I also want to mention that um, I have just posted that same link within the questions panel. So if you do uh, want to sign up for this free newsletter, you can copy and paste it from that questions panel. But also, I will be including it with the follow-up message later on today um, that will include the recording link, a list of these webinar notes, as well as the link to sign up for that free newsletter. Um, so any questions that you might have at this time, go ahead and add those into the questions panel. Now, something else I'd like to mention um, <clears throat> that um, Recognia is also available in Trader Workstation. Uh, once you do subscribe, uh, you can access these same tools and use those in your market scanners. Um, so did want to point out that that's available as another tool that you can utilize within the Trader Workstation. Um, okay, looks like Jim has a question for you, um, Peter. Peter, not sure. Um, uh, you may be muted. Yes, I was muted. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, okay. No, you're still um, there. Great. It's amazing how often that happens. Uh, so, question from from James: Any stats on the average time between direction shifts in recommended ETFs? Uh, so, great question. So, uh, I guess first of all, I'll clarify that uh, I wouldn't call any of these to be recommendations. So, rather, what we are trying to do in our ETF newsletter is to help you understand what technical events are being detected on 
uh, a family of or, or, or a universe of ETFs. None of these are recommendations. Rather, we're just sort of automating the standard practices of technical analysis. Uh, with that in mind, we, we don't have any specific stats about uh, changes in direction. Um, what I would say, though, is that um, it, it's pretty uncommon that you would actually have a newsletter one day that would say there's a bullish event on a particular ETF and then have the exact opposite perspective the next day, though the principles of technical analysis don't, don't prevent that from happening. So obviously you could see cases where uh, you know, a particular ETF maybe has uh, some very, very bullish price action, but there's some changes in the market or in the news perhaps, which may change things around. So um, Either way, you know, you'd, you'd be interested in knowing that there's been a change of, uh, of perspective on a particular ETF. I see another question coming in here uh, from Ted. It looks like, is there a target move or uh, time period the technical indicators are oriented towards? Um, so, so we focus on uh, all time horizons in the ETF newsletter. All time horizons means those three horizons we talked about um, um, in our discussion of Charles Dow and his market cycles. So we do the short term, intermediate term and long term. So the, the kinds of ideas you get in the ETF newsletter could be any one of those. So at the shortest, um, some of the short term indicators would suggest trading opportunities that would range from anywhere from say two to six weeks. And perhaps at the longest, they would be opportunities that may last uh, up say nine months or more. Now, when you actually click on the event and read the description in the hosted article page, it would be clear to you um, whether this is a short-term, intermediate-term, or long-term opportunity. And depending what you are looking for as an investor or trader, you could choose whether this was an opportunity that was suitable for you. Uh, I don't see any more questions here, though I'll answer another one that's very common. Um, which, which uh, you know, comes up quite frequently is people will say sometimes the ideas in the ETF newsletter have target prices associated with them and sometimes they don't. You know, how come? And the answer is because it depends on what type of event it is that's been detected. So remember, we talked about our different event classes. It's only the classic patterns that can give us a target price. So when the events are short-term patterns or indicators and oscillators, we know that something bullish has happened and that's interesting to know. It doesn't give us the target price the same way that a classic pattern does. So you know whether or not there's a target price available is not just uh, uh, our whim, it's rather what kind of event we've actually detected. Uh, here's a question here from Angie who asks, uh, on the daily newsletter, uh, why sometimes it shows the percent move possible and sometimes not? So that's exactly the question I just answered. And how is the computed historical stats? Um, so so we don't publish histor historical statistics on the newsletter, um, um, although it is something we monitor internally just to uh, improve the efficacy of our products, but it's not something that's actually published uh, as part of the newsletter. Um, looking through more questions here. Excuse me one second. Here's a question. Uh, so here's a question from Ken. It says, can you describe better where we find Recogni and Trader Workstation? So I think there's and two. I'm just about to do that, Peter. Um, I actually do have TWS open. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab those controls from you so that we can actually um, walk everyone through how to um, access that information through TWS. So uh, let me go ahead, share my screen. It'll take a moment till it pops up on your window and you'll see I currently have TWS open. Um, now from here, I do want to point out that in uh, or the Recognia events are available um, in our market scanner feature and also available any um, and can be added to any place that you do have an interactive market data row. Now um, in the uh, notice here, and let me put this into a full screen view. I'm going to be up in the uh, quote monitor screen, and notice here that simply clicking the plus tab that's available, you can go into the Mosaic Market Scanner, for example. Now, there are several scanners that are available here, um, and you can customize any of your own, including adding those Recognia indicators. Now, what I'm going to do is start out with one of our predefined event or predefined scanners 
markets and just the market movers. So we see those with the greatest uh, decline and the greatest um, increase in today's market. Now notice you can go in and customize those. And from here, what I'm going to do is choose add field. And notice that at the very bottom, if you scroll down, you'll find those technical indicators that are available by Recognia. Notice here there's um, <clears throat> short term, intermediate, and long term event items that can be added and utilized in your market scanners or, as I mentioned, any place that you have an interactive market data row. Now, from here, I've already, to save some time, I already do have some that, uh, or one that I've created, and uh, you'll see here, it's already in, and what I'm going to do, because I've got more information than what appears in that small window, is simply double-click the title bar. Now, notice the basic information from the scanner is available, and we still have that dual sorted scan. But what I've added here are the short-term technical event class, um, the date that it occurred, and the name. So notice, and let me see if I can collapse some of these sections here you'll be able to uh, view this directly within the market scanners. Um, now there's more criteria that you can set up, but notice here that it does show you that short-term event name. We have intermediate and long-term ones as well. Um, and uh, do be aware that these can be sorted um, by simply double-clicking the column header. So notice if I click one time, um, <clears throat> it will show you the events um, in ascending order, or I can click a second time and it will show you those events that were just identified yesterday. Uh, so I did want you to see that is available. Now also, if we go into the classic version of Trader Workstation, where you have that um, spreadsheet-like interface, keep in mind that you can also add any of those Recognia indicators by going up to the configuration branch. Simply choosing configure from here, you'll see that uh, when we're looking at market data columns, there's also a list of categories and once again you'll find those technical indicators by Recognia will also be available here. So where I've added the short term information on the um, market scanners, uh, let me just simply add a long term uh, technical event name. I'm going to select it, choose add, ah, and now notice what does show up in the right hand side of your screen. Not only the name, the date, and the event uh, the trade type. So once I do have this information, I'll simply choose apply and okay. And you can see that same um, or that same data uh, is going to be available. Uh, within any of your market data rows. So here I do have just a list of certain ETFs and notice that you can find uh, that very same information, the date, the event name, as well as the trade type. So a uh, few ways that you can utilize for Cognia indicators directly in your version of TWS, whether you're a Mosaic user um, or a classic TWS user. By the way, the uh, market scanners are also available from this window, uh, simply go to, I'm going to right click on that plus, and you'll see here that you can also add um, some of our more advanced market scanners that also give you the ability to add those same types of features within um, this uh, additional market or the advanced market scanners. So a quick look here at how you can access this information through TWS. By the way, I forgot to uh, click on that filter and notice if we do go to the very bottom here, you'll find that very same list of events is available. So whether you're using our market scanners or simply adding them into any of your watch lists, your quote monitors, or even for your portfolio. Um, so just be aware of that. Okay, well with that now, um, any additional questions? I've been chatting here. Uh, Peter, I don't know if you've seen any other questions that have come in. Uh, there's just one other question from Ted asking if there are uh, risk controls such as trailing stop levels as part of the service. Those are not, those are not part of the service today, Ted, sorry, no. And I don't see any other questions beyond that. 
Okay. All right. Well, Peter, thank you very much for uh, the presentation today. And I want to thank everyone as well for joining us here this afternoon. But that is going to conclude today's webinar. Now, a reminder, we have been recording today's event, and I'll be sending out a direct link to the recorded playback as well as uh, the same set of slides that Peter has used today. I'll also include that link to sign up uh, for that daily uh, <clears throat> trade ideas from Rokosnia, that daily newsletter. So with that, we are going to conclude our event today. Thanks, everyone, for participating, and have a great rest of your day. Once again, thanks to Recognia and Peter Ashton uh, for our presentation. So have a great day, everyone.